So normal person sees a rabbit outside and is like, bunny, uh, whatever I am, I was like, oh, I should talk about Mary Toft. Uh, good morning, good evening, good, good to who needs it. Uh, I got a message from my best friend recently that she had learned who Mary Toft was. And it's important, I think, that everyone know. Uh, because I was really excited that somebody else had stumbled onto this weird fact and I could be like, sit down, let's, let's talk about it. Did you know? In 1726, 24, 25 year old Mary Toft had an unusual complaint. Peasants of this time were expected to continue working in the fields during pregnancy. On the 27th of September, Mary went into labor after complaining of severe complications, pain, and claiming to have discharged pieces of flesh, possibly complications related to a placental abruption. On September 27th, however, Mary gave birth to several pieces of flesh which were examined by several local midwives, including John Howard, who investigated the claims and went on to deliver from Mary three legs of a cat of a tabby color, one leg of a rabbit, the guts were as a cat's, and in them were three pieces of backbone of an eel. The cat's feet supposed were formed in her imagination from a cat she was fond of that had slept on her bed at night. Howard eventually moved Toft to Guildford, where he offered to deliver the body parts of rabbits out of Mrs. Toft for any unbelievers, eventually catching the attention of King George I's court. Investigators came to suspect Howard and had Mary moved under strict control of Nathaniel St. Andre after Howard refused to let others assist him in rabbit deliveries. A private investigation by Thomas Onslow, 2nd Baron Onslow, had revealed that Toft's husband, Joshua, had been buying a strange amount of rabbits. Thomas Howard, unrelated to John, was a porter where Toft was staying during examinations and confessed to accepting bribes from Mary's family members to bring rabbits to Mary while under observation. Mary eventually confessed to having had a miscarriage and, while her cervix was dilated, inserting parts of a cat and the head of a rabbit into her body and invented the story about becoming obsessed with rabbits during pregnancy with the belief that she could make money as a medical mystery to provide for herself and the three children she already had. Over time, she accused a lot of other people of being involved in the hoax and blamed them, including trying to pin the hoax on a mysterious traveling lady who taught her how to insert the rabbit parts. The confession came at a bad time for the medical community because the day before on December 3rd, a pamphlet was published, a short narrative on the extraordinary delivery of rabbits on which Nathaniel St. Andre, the private surgeon to the royal family, had staked his reputation. The medical community was widely mocked for believing the hoax and going to such measures to invent reasons why this could happen. It set faith back in the medical community in England for decades. All of the medical men involved scrambled to recant their views, and there was a volley of lawsuits for defamation. The career of St. Andre and his wife, who was an attendant to Queen Caroline, were ruined and they left court and lived in obscurity. Crowds mobbed the place where Mary was being held, but no one could agree upon what charge exactly should be placed against her. The family hadn't benefited at all from the hoax financially. Eventually, she was released and returned to Surrey in April 1727. She had a daughter the following year, so it doesn't seem the rabbit situation affected her reproductive health in the long term. If you liked this, like it, and I will be happy to share more weird history things with you and other stories about writing research and ramblings. Thanks for listening.